Hey ZM Primary students, it is Mrs. Miller here today, and I'm gonna show you how to make a B-Bot grid. So the cool part about this is that you get to be as creative as you want with materials, what it will look like, but the idea is that you're making a special grid for your B-Bot robot. And we wanna make sure that we use it correctly. So the cool thing too about making this project is that Really, you're going to use the materials that you have access for. So today I looked around my house and found materials. In the classroom, you might have certain things at a certain time. So first for my board, where my B-Bot will roam, I found a piece of tag board. Now you could even use the floor. You could use construction paper or cardboard, anything we find in the classroom. I have a pencil, and the most important thing is when I'm making my grid, it's important to use pencil first because then I can always go over it with markers. I can even cover it in tape, which is what I'm gonna show you today, which means you might need scissors. And probably the most important thing is your measuring tool. Today, I have a tape measure, and the reason why I'm using this is because it has centimeters on it. We might use a ruler, a yardstick, or even a special B-Bot ruler that we can print off. But the most important thing when you're making your grid is measuring because we found out that our B-Bot grids are squares, which means that each side has the same length, and that length is 15 inches. So I already have this ready to go on my tape measure. This is gonna help me as I start to do this. So your first job is get materials, whatever you have available at school or at home, wherever you're making your B-Bot grid, and then we can get started. All right, so first I'm gonna have my tape measure and my pencil. Now the idea is that I'm gonna make this into a grid full of squares that are all 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters. And so it's really important to use my pencil because I might make some mistakes. So I am going to mark off 15 centimeters on my tape measure. So then I can make some little marks with my pencil so that I know it's 15 centimeters. Now what I could do is I could use a yardstick as a straight edge and make a line. I'm actually going to use some tape, but before that, I'm going to make my next marks too. So now I'm going to start at that line, do 15 more centimeters. And when you're working, whether you're doing it by yourself, with a partner, make sure to take your time and be accurate. When we measure, it's really important that we are accurate because otherwise it can throw our whole grid off. And so I may be doing it a little quicker than you would, but remember that Mrs. Miller has been doing this for a long time. I've had lots of practice. And so when you start making it, it might just look like a bunch of lines. And depending on our paper, you can see that this isn't quite 15 inches. So I might cut that off later. So what I'm gonna do now with the tape, and my tape today is a little thicker than I would have liked, but again, this is what materials I had, and sometimes we don't find exactly what we want, and that's okay. So, like I said earlier, maybe we would find a straight edge and made a really long line. Sometimes we could do that. We could trace it over and marker. So, hmm. This isn't a very good example, but I don't have a straight edge today. So that's what I'm just gonna do really lightly. So see, there's my line connecting all those marks. It's pretty straight. And then if I wanted, I could use a marker. I could trace over it. That's one option. I kind of like the tape option. And it is a little thicker, so I'm gonna try to do it kind of in the middle. I'm gonna do, start here. And again, I'm gonna try to be as accurate as I can. 
And there we go. All right. Now, remember, your grid isn't going to be perfect, but you're going to try your best to make it accurate. So far, I have half my grid done. Now, I need to make my other set of lines. So again, I'm going to get out my measuring tool, and this time, my lines will be right here. Hopefully, you remember 15 inches. Again, it's going to be a little bit off, so I might have to make some cuts. Now, just for myself to remember, I'm going to make a line here and a line here. That means it doesn't work with my grid, so I can cut it. So again, I'm going to make a nice big line with my foot. And there you go. If I get rid of this and this, I have my grid. It's not perfect, but I can tell how my Biba is going to go. Hopefully watching Mrs. Miller make the grid was a little helpful for you because when you make your own grid, you can make it however you want with whatever you use. The biggest thing I'm going to remind you again is measuring. Make sure that your, uh, that your squares are 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters. That's the way that we're going to be able to be successful once we grab our B-Bots and we test it out. So here's a look at my grid. As you can see, I have three, six, nine, 12 squares. Yours could be smaller, yours could be bigger, but this is an idea of what mine looks like. I use tape, maybe you might use marker, but I hope you enjoy making your grid. It's a chance for you to get creative and work with your partner. So my next step, I have my utensils, maybe using markers, crayons, or pencil, and it's time to decorate. Figure out a start spot and an end spot. Maybe you want to make some obstacles. What do they, the bee bot, what does the bee bot need to get around? What's the path that they're going to take? So now it's your chance to have fun and get creative. See you later, and I can't wait to see your bee bot grids.